We've got a special guest coming up and he's probably the reason many Carlton fans can continue to go to the footy through many dark months. Patrick Cripps, a future captain of the Blues and current star, is with us and he's on the couch. Carlton recording their first victory of the year. And there's the siren. Yeah, it is the famous old dark Blues today and their coach gets his first win of the season. And Patrick Cripps was very much a part of that victory. It would have been absolutely sensational singing the song. Uh, welcome to you, Patrick. It's great to have you on the couch for the first time. Oh, thanks, Jared. Thanks for having me. Um, it must have been fantastic. Uh, it's been a long, long start to the season, but to finally get to sing the song, that's why we all play footy. Yeah, it was good. Obviously, that feeling after the game is, is what you crave. And, um, look, it has been a tough start of the year, but I think the best thing about this year, things haven't been going well, but the morale around the place has been really upbeat. And, How um, have you kept that morale positive? Um, I think we're just realistic with where we're at. Um, obviously, we've had a few injuries. It's a bit unfortunate to older guys and um, a, lot of, a lot of young guys coming to the side. But, um, look, we've kept trying to, to d develop them and um, upskilling them, and um, they played, played a part in the weekend. Is that something you discussed? Because, obviously, in footy, you've got to be careful about excuses and reasons. But it has been a reason. I mean, you lose Gibbs, who's a fantastic player. You lose Murphy. You lose Doherty, who I thought had an outstanding season. Um, yeah, Cruz has had some injuries as well. So how do you d address that, the excuses versus reasons component? Because there has been some reasons for your, your, your rough start. Yeah, um... Well, I think we mentioned it, but we never accept losing. That's one thing where the Bolts really drove through the group. And um, look, there were some reasons, but uh, we definitely held ourselves to high standards. Um, like I said, keep um, upskilling these young guys, and um, yeah, it's started to pay I mean, off. there's, your, there's the, the, the graph 4.3 in the, the, the 18 to 21 in 2016. So you've got, you've got progressively younger each year. So have you felt that over the last three years? Yeah, I think um, if you look back, they say the rebuild starts obviously 2016, but in terms of the age demographic of the group, this is probably the youngest we ever get. So um, look, we've got the talent there, now it's just trying to, to, to build them. I love the fact when you talk about those young guys, because you're so old. <laughs> Um, the, the captaincy seems to have settled in the absence of, of Murph really comfortably on you. I watched you closely on the weekend. and Is that something that you aspired to, that you were born to do, it comes easily to you, or you've got to work at it? Um, I really enjoy the leadership role, but I think leadership is like anything. It's something you, you develop and, and continue to try and improve. And um, Look, nothing really changes. Um, in terms of, it's more just get a bit nervous doing the pre-game speech than anything, but um, <laughs> no, in terms of leadership stuff, Merce's been um, a fantastic leader around the place and he's someone that's given me a lot of advice along the way. I thought Cruiser, along with yourself, set the tone on Saturday and he's been, well, Malign's not the right word, but a number one pick that's missed a lot of footy with injury, but his influence on your group is as profound as yours, I think, and that's saying something. Yeah, look, he's a big guy. The best thing about him is his follow-up and his tackling work and when he's setting the scene in the middle, um, when you've got guys like Paddy Dow and Zach Fish and you see Cruz charging through the, the place, it definitely gives them confidence. Mate, Jed Lamb uh, went after Brendan Goddard. Uh, the rest of you look like you're sort of whacking in a little bit. That pre-game plan to target. Did, uh, was the Goddard name circled on the whiteboard before the game? Oh, Lamb definitely had a role going into the game and um, I thought he executed that role really well. Um, yeah, look, he... Um, I think Goddard went up to the wing at, in, in the second half, so Lamy definitely played that role really well, and I think that definitely helped us, helped us win the game. Is this part of, you know, trying to win games? You know, you, 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 Carlton won over hard edge going forward, obviously, over the coming years. Yeah, it is. Um, obviously, we respect um, Brendan as a player, and obviously you wouldn't, um, I suppose, put someone like Lamy on a player like that if you didn't respect them. So, um, look, we want to be a hard physical side, and... Um, I think that's why we won the weekend, because we showed that. Can I ask you about uh, confidence, particularly early in the season? The JLT, you had some really exciting victories. You're moving the ball really well, kicking lots of goals. First round against Richmond, it was very close to a victory for you. And then you seem to have fallen into a fair bit of a trough. How yeah. did you deal with that? Um, well, I think that's the, the battle with the young group. Obviously, we, we, our big focus in the preseason was our offence and our scoring. And... Um, we did start to score, but then we probably started to leak a few more goals than we would have liked. So it's, I think footy now is finding the balance and um, saw some momentum is a big thing in footy. And uh, I think when, re when you look at the game, you've got to look at the moments in games and um, review them and try and stop teams piling on five, six goals mm. when they have momentum. So what happened at the start of the year, first quarter of the season? You kicked five goals against Richmond before they'd even scored. Yeah. Was that on the back or was there too much of a focus on the offence over the pre-season? Um, I don't know. I think we built a lot of confidence over the JLT form. We won our first few games and um, 
I remember looking around in the crowd after the first five goals. I thought I was in a dream. The, the place was buzzing. <laughs> five goals are against the running premiers. But um, look, we did have a heavy focus on um, on offence going in into the round one. And um, I think as the season goes on, you sort of work out that you need to um, probably switch back to a bit of defence and find that balance, which I think we're starting to find now. Tell, tell us about Daisy Thomas. I mean, you know, heavily criticised last year, the year before. Obviously came off the back of a really bad ankle injury, but he's been fantastic. Just tell us about his resurgence as a player. Yeah, look, Daisy, he's an upbeat character and always works hard. And um, look, he's had his trouble with, in, with injuries and I, I couldn't be happier for, for him. Obviously, he's been... Um, I suppose had a tough time in terms of the media sort of hype around him and um, no, he's a ripper fella but he's gone out half back this year and um, I suppose with, with a young group his um, leadership and that around the place has been yeah first class so I'm who, really happy for him. Who, who are you measuring yourself against? I mean we all played we all used to have a player or two that we looked at and thought you know and, and checked up on them each week I mean have you got someone of that ill? Oh you'll always look at the best players obviously Fife's going really well right now Dustin Martin, Dangerfield all, all the the, the best players in the comp, yeah, you want to come up and verse the best players, so they're guys so like... When you play Fife, I mean, do you put your hand up saying, I want to go head to head with him, or how does that work? Yeah, you always love the challenge of playing on the best. I think that's when you learn the most, too. You, you sort of measure yourself on, on how you go against them, and um, he's someone I respect as a player. Well, you're 195 centimetres, though, same height as I am. I was a centre forward. Do you have aspirations to play forward, or how much do you see yourself playing forward uh, throughout games? Yeah, look, I do enjoy playing forward. I, I probably would have played forward a bit more this year if Murph didn't get injured um, early on in the year. But I think as our midfield develops and, and gets a bit, bit stronger with these, these younger bodies, um, I think I'll go forward a bit more. I've got some photos I want to uh, show you. Um, one of them is a height comparison with uh, Nick Rewald, a bit like Brownie. He interviewed you at the start of the season. <clears throat> He's one of the greatest uh, centre-half forwards of all time. You've got him covered for height. But you weren't obviously really tall as a youngster. I've got another photo here of you in an under-15 event. Now at the top there you can see Jesse Hogan and down in the far right corner we've got a little little yeah. tiny puny... Under-15? Oh, I was about 12 there I reckon. When did you uh, have a growth spurt? Yeah look when I was 15 in that photo I would There's have been Jesse about... Hogan by the way looking as robust as he does at the uh, moment. It was a good series though. He actually won the 15 school boys. I that reckon year, you but... might have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah but I, I, was, I was a real small, uh, I was a late bloomer actually. I didn't really start growing to probably the back end of 16 and uh, when I was year 12 um, I, I started to shoot up a bit and even since I got to the club I think I've grown about five centimetres mm. from when I first arrived which in a way has probably helped my footy. Um, obviously I didn't rely on my strength and my size growing up and probably um, taught me to be clean and clean around the bowl, which is um, yeah, something I feel like it's my strength at the moment. I think we all think that. <laughs> Speaking of Jesse Hogan, you play Melbourne this weekend and there's some history there. The Jordan Lewis got weeks. For, did he break your jaw in the end? He had a little crack in it last year, yeah. And um, Jesse got reported for hitting Sam Rowe and I watched the follow-up go and there was some genuine feeling in that contest. Yeah, look, I always enjoy playing Melbourne. Um, they're obviously an up-and-coming young side and um, they play the footy the right way, a hard-contested game, so... Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the contest. A little bit more so than most others? Or uh, I'll wait and see, son. <laughs> You've got a good memory, don't you, Kruba? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be looking forward to the week. Can I tell you <laughs> hey, uh, your brutal style of football. We, lo we love you for your style of football, mate. Um, how, how, do you get, how do you pull up during the week? You're, you're a young man, but it looks like a taxing game style. Yeah, look, I, look I'm not the quickest bloke or the, or the best runner out there, so I've got to play to my strengths, and that's been hard around the contest. And... Um, look, I tried to be a bit of a posing figure to try and help those young guys get confidence in the middle. And we you'd pull up a bit sore at the start of the week, but um, do all the recovery right and you back it up next week and something I really enjoy. So I've got a buy coming up. Do you look forward to the break or do you go overseas or is it just uh, footy, footy, footy? No, I'll get away. I usually get back home to WA and catch up with family and friends and um, try and get away out of the footy bubble for a bit and reset and then uh, get the body right and tackle the back half of the year. How much do you enjoy getting home? There'll be Carlton supporters watching this going, oh, yeah, I hope yeah, you don't mm. enjoy it too much. What's the contractual situation? What are your long-term thoughts? Oh, no, I do like getting home and catch up with, uh, with mates back home, but um, I really do enjoy Melbourne. Um, I love the Carlton Footy Club. and um, Look, I haven't um, had chats with the guys yet. I've still got a year and a half to go. and I've been through some tough times at the club, so I really want to stick around and enjoy, the, enjoy some good so times. So if they came to you with a five, you know, the, the trend is the longer term five year deal, would you look at that? Oh, look, I would definitely talk to my manager later on the year, but um, I'd say he'd start talking with Big Sauce soon. Hmm. 
I think you'll uh, put everybody at rest as soon as you sign at the Blues. Patrick, great to uh, finally have a chat to you and uh, welcome you to the couch. Uh, you've been a, a great inspiration as a young bloke to that club and uh, as Brownie said, we've all admired your young career. Good luck for the rest of the season. No, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks great for having me. Patrick Cripps, one of the stars for the Blues, our special guest. Uh, we're